Good morning, traders. It's Friday, February the 2nd. we got some pretty good price action going on in the markets today. We're seeing equities have a, a pretty good bout of selling. They were down about uh, 7 tenths of a percent here, uh, recovering a little bit. Let's just go to the futures so you can see where we're at. Here is today's chart. We'll just zoom in a little bit here. We're pulling down to the 20-day moving average. And we're stuck under this five day moving average. Typically, the market is either above it or below it. And the short term trend, more or less, you trade with the trend of the five day. So at this point, we are under here. We're tagging the 20 day moving average. And it should act as a support zone today with the price gapping lower. We are probably going to open up with panic selling in the market, uh, meaning the NYSE is going to see a huge ratio of selling. And uh, the VIX is up this morning, which kind of is pointing to uh, the panic, uh, giving us kind of a tip off that there's fear in the market. When there's fear, we find usually find some type of low. And we talked about this the other day. We had the first move down. We had a short term oversold level. We've got a little consolidation and there's potential here for this ABC correction. And we could be adding to our position today on the gap down. And uh, let's just take a look at uh, if we take a look at this. Uh, more or less the, the chart here. This is the uh, chart of our spikes. And uh, we had, we had a, a signal here, a little spike down the other day. Price did come down in overnight trading and, and, and filled that spike. Um, overall, this morning, just a, a little while ago, we had a spike to the upside, which happens to go right into this gap window. So market here could see some volatility, could see some pretty good selling this morning. Uh, initial bout of panic and, and stop orders hit the market. But I think we'll see that spike come up and fill to the upside. And again, we still have a, a long term uh, a gap uh, from a while ago here, a few sessions back. If we just go back here, uh, you can see this gap that still needs to get filled way up here. So overall, the market has been grinding down. We've been seeing some pretty strong waves of selling in the market. We see a strong wave of selling, another strong wave, another strong wave in overnight trading, a uh, big wave down. This hopefully is an exhaustion move. This is uh, going to be uh, an exhaustion gap to the downside. And hopefully we see, um, usually we see some type of washout low in the morning and then hopefully see some type of strong recovery. There will be a lot of resistance through this area. There's a lot of price action traded through here. So if the market does rally up here, it may, it may stall out here and hopefully close strong on the day, but it probably won't break through this resistance and um, we did see panic selling over the last couple of days down near these lows and the ratio was uh, eight to eight to one usually when we see that we see uh, within two or three days we see the market flush out with uh, a lower low and then reverse so this is what we're looking for and hopefully we see that panic and final washout in the market and for that bottom to uh, be put in place for the equities now going back to uh, going back to the chart here, let's take a look at uh, uh, precious metals. They they took a dive this morning. They were holding up fairly well, uh, and just recently um, we we saw a big bout of selling. 8:30, we had some economic news come out, and of course it's uh, moving to the downside. And if we just focus on price of gold here and do a Fibonacci extension, giving us a target here, we go from this high right here down to the recent low and then back up to this high and we just carry it forward. This gives us an idea of where this next leg should go, meaning we've had a pullback, we've had this bear flag form, and more or less now we should come down to the 1320 for gold, which is right, of course, through this key pivot zone right here, where the market found resistance, broke through it, then found support before going higher. So everything always seems to move out on a technical standpoint. You'll notice the market moves between floors and ceilings. If uh, if you think of the stock market or a stock chart as an apartment building, more or less, uh, you've got a floor and then you've got a ceiling and then you've got a floor and then you've got a ceiling and the market moves and ping pongs around between it. When the ceiling is broken, it'll usually move to the next ceiling and you usually have to go back in time if you're moving up to find that next ceiling or you simply use a Fibonacci extension using, okay, well, here's the move up and you can do a Fibonacci extension to the downside. It should give you a rough upside target of where that is. And actually, if we throw a Fibonacci extension, I'm not even sure where it would come out, somewhere around that level. So we go from this low to the high, down to this low and carry it forward. You can see the market move pretty much perfectly. It moved from here 
to the high, came down using that pivot low, we could forecast that we should see the move all the way up here to 100% measured move, which it did, and it's pulled back. So based on that, we should see gold move down to this 1321, which would uh, send gold miners down and send our dust ETF play um, up another 10 or 15 or potentially 20% going forward here. So that's what we're, we're looking for over the next couple of days. Uh, taking a look over at uh, miners, uh, take a quick look. They have a bearish formation, three drives to a high, been consolidating, looks very close to a big breakdown. This Fibonacci move would put us way down here. It looks like we could see a big flush out in miners, which is what we want. Um, we're already, we already pulled off 11% on this first pull, getting uh, uh, buying the dust ETF up here. Uh, as the price falls, dust goes up and we're consolidating. So we could see another, the second half of that move down for a much larger percentage move uh, to the downside. Looking over at the dollar, the dollar the, yesterday sold off pretty hard, but this morning it's a big move to the upside. It's trading back up near resistance. We've been talking about how the cycles are forming a low here. We should start to see the dollar rally, and obviously a strong dollar will put that downward pressure we've been looking for in precious metals. Looking at uh, natural gas real quick, yesterday, last couple of days has been selling off. We closed our position out yesterday for a quick um, it was a wild ride, but 9.1% uh, on our, our DGAS inverse ETF profiting as the market fell. Uh, we're going to leave that as be until we get a new signal there. But looking at crude oil, uh, crude oil is up testing these highs. You could argue here it's cycles are, are mixed on this, but overall there could be potential top forming here. And this could be the top today put in place. And we'd have a neckline right across these lows. If you want to go from close to close, we'd have a neckline somewhere there, giving you an early signal. But there's potential that this is rolling over. And if it breaks and closes below here uh, and then starts to break these pivot lows, we're going to see a pretty good flush to the downside. If it starts to break down, we'll be right back down to the 62 in a heartbeat, which it will act as a support zone. It was resistance here and then became uh, support as it broke above it. So if it does tag this level, it will bounce. But starting to look a little bit like a head and shoulders formation. But again, overall, uh, it is still holding up very strong and it is in an uptrend and uh, not something we really want to uh, uh, jump in front of at this point. And if we look at the energy sector, XLE, we talked about this yesterday in the video that uh, looked like we were having a, a flush out low here, a reversal. And uh, yesterday we had a very strong move to the upside with the short term oversold level. We are pinned below this five day moving average. So this is pretty critical. You can see how the five day uh, works as a support zone when you're underneath it and there's strong momentum to the downside, you will stay underneath it. Um, when it starts chopping through it, that's usually a consolidation and we're looking for a different type of setup, a longer term pattern uh, going forward. But at this point, we uh, a lot of a lot of uh, sectors and indexes are having some high momentum here and they're stuck under the five days. So we'll see how this consolidates and potentially we could see energy flush out and go even lower for second half of this move. Again, using Fibonacci, go from the high to the low, potentially to where this high is. And that was not the right tool. Hold on one sec. We go from this high down to this low, potentially up to the five day. There is potential here for uh, the energy sector. If we, if, if it starts to roll over and break down, it's had a move down, consolidates here. If it breaks down, then it's going to have a pretty sharp tumble uh, down in price. And that would be uh, a, a potentially a leading indicator that crude oil itself will roll over. Usually stocks roll over first. So if we do have a, start to see a breakdown, it could lead us uh, in a signal to short uh, an inverse ETF to be uh, net short on crude. Anyways, that's it for this morning. Talk to you in a little bit. Bye-bye.